Hello, my name is Joe Richter. I'm a real estate broker and an associate broker with Keller Williams Realty. I prepare monthly reports that look at the market trends and home values in 14 communities from Newport through Irvine, Tribuco Canyon, and Ladera Ranch. These reports can be accessed on our website at joe-richter.com under a navigation link named Market Trends Monthly Update. Each report takes a focused look at a specific community or neighborhood. You will see we process a lot of MLS data to make the following presentations. We have made the same data accessible to you on our website at joe-richter.com under the navigation link predefined community listings. This report focuses on Portola Hills single family homes, detached, no attached, 1500 square feet and up. It covers the period starting January 1st through May 31st, 2020. The monthly headline is new listings jump back into normal territory contracts written maintain a position in the normal range with four new listings in may the portola hills market may have found a base for its recovery contracts written hung on to stay inside the normal range as defined by the prior five years The Portola Hills single-family market is currently a seller's market with 1.7 months of inventory. Chapman University defines a buyer's market in Southern California as being 3.5 months or more of inventory. In addition to the monthly inventory being low, the actual number of units available remains low, as seen by the blue line in the graph. Monitoring the active listings provides insight into trends that may be developing that impact home values and inventory levels. There are currently seven active listings. There were five in our last report. There were 11 new listings over the past 90 days. Six of those homes are still on the market. There were six new listings during the last 30 days. That would be May. The next section will be discussing the three essential steps in selling and buying. They are new listings which reflect a willing seller, contracts written ref reflect a willing buyer, and closing is the execution of the purchase contract by the buyer with the lender cooperation. Compared to 2019, new listings are currently down 13%, contracts written are down 7%, and closings are up 56%. As noted, new listings are down 13% on a year-over-year -year basis. The Portola single-family homes market had what could be considered a normal number of new listings in May, as seen in the blue line on the graph. On the positive side, Fannie Mae is forecasting very strong third and fourth quarters for this year. Even though we've had a rather shocking spring, contracts written are only running 7% below the same period in 2019. Both January and February in 2020 were stronger than the same period in 2019. March and April fell far short of normal, and May made a feeble attempt at a recovery. However, by reviewing the column graph, you will see that 2019 was by far the best year of the prior five in Portola Hills, which indicates 2020 was going to be a great, great year. Pay attention to the blue line in the graph over the next 60 days it will forecast any changes in market type. On the positive side, again, Fannie Mae is forecasting very strong in the third and fourth quarters.
close sales are running ahead of 2019 by 56% for the same period. Again, this is solely attributed to the fact that 2020 got off to a great start and 2019 had a very slow start to the year as seen by the green line in the graph. Understandably, home values are the most important subject sellers want to discuss. The Portola Hills detached single-family homes over 1,500 square feet are running down slightly in value. That's 83 hundredths of 1%, less than 1% in value compared to 2019. The current average list price for the active listings is $977,000. The range of asking price for the current active listings is from $759,000 to $1,199,000. The 90-day closing activity has to be discussed. Recent closings are used as a primary metric to de determine pricing in appraisals and CMAs. Depending on the amount of information available, a look-back period of 90 to 180 days is typically used to obtain sufficient data to make the appraisal estimate. In our reports, we always use a 90-day look-back period because our markets are robust with plenty of transactions actions and the shorter period reduces the distortion seasonality has on the data. For instance, looking back six months now would mean we would have November and December data in these assumptions and that would be totally irrelevant information skewing the presentation. Over the last 90 days nine homes have closed None of those homes sold below the revised asking price, eight sold at the revised asking price, and one home sold above the revised asking price. Days on market, or DOM as it's commonly known, is the time from activating the listing on the MLS to getting an offer accepted and a purchase contract signed. As listing brokers, we always advise in a normal market that DOM time should be 30 to 45 days and suggest pricing accordingly. The DOM for all active listings is 44 days. It was 60 days in our last report at the end of April. Inventory levels are the primary determining factor in defining a market type as either a seller or buyer's market. Chapman University defines a buyer's market here in Southern California as being 3.5 months or more of inventory. The current inventory in Portola Hills is 1.7 months, making Portola Hills a seller's market. To aid in forecasting, we monitor the trends of three measures of inventory. The 90-day trend will give us a sense of a surge in new listings or contracts written. 90-day inventory rose by 100%, considering Portola is a relatively small market. It started with three active listings 90 days ago, and at the time we gathered the data, there were six. 100% is not a lot. Year-over-year -year inventory helps measure how steady dependable a market is. Year-over-year -year inventory is down 36 percent. And monitoring the month-to-month -month comparison lets us check for abnormalities in the seasonal trends. May 2020 compared to May 2019 is down 33 percent. As mentioned, we use data direct from the MLS. This map shows the location of each of the listings that was in our data. We have put 
the raw data into our proprietary statistical models to do this analysis. No one else can give you this presentation. Because we have the saved searches, we have gone ahead and prepared links for each community as a separate page on our website so you can see the public facing information discussed in this report and monitor your neighbor's house as it goes on the market. In addition to the map, you will see thumbnails of each of the listings that show summary information. If you want to see the full detail available on the MLS, click on any one of the thumbnails. This table shows all the current active listings. Note, we do very good statistical analysis and we even go through the effort of defining outliers as seen in the table on the lower right hand corner. These are the closings that have occurred so far in 2020. This is everything. And I would like to clarify that this is everything comment. Remember, we are not looking at condominiums. We are not looking at duplexes. We are not looking at homes under 1,500 square feet. We are only looking at the single family homes in Portola Hills that are detached and over 1,500 square feet. And here is the last bit of detail, but it's important. This graph shows the value range of all the closings so far this year. The red dots represent the close price. The gray dot represents the original list price of the same transaction. Notice most of the gray dots are above the red dot indicating a price reduction. However, there are several gray dots below the red dots which show a price increase. Buyers and economic conditions set market value. In closing, we would like to say thank you for patiently listening. We have tried to make this a high-level explanation of how the market is evolving. If you need help with your real estate needs or just have questions about forbearance or prices or DOM, anything at all, please contact me. The team I work with would love to be of service. Again, thank you very much.